everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Sydney in specific, which is incredible because that's the city I know most about. So when you get to Sydney, how do you get from the airport to wherever you're going? And also, how do you decide where you should go? Now, ideally, the second thing, you should have it decided before you leave. Um, and you should know where you want to go or at least have an idea of it and then you can kind of like finalize where you want to live when you get there. Um, when you get out of the airport or rather you go through immigration and all that sort of stuff, the cool thing is that the train station is actually inside the airport and so you just have to sort of go down the escalators or the elevator and you can take the train to wherever you want to go. The train ticket, I think, is about $20, and I don't know if that's a return price or one way, um, but it's still fairly affordable in comparison to a bus or definitely a cab. Um, and when I say a bus, I'm talking about one of those like vans that picks up a whole bunch of people at once. So that's something that I really wanted to mention in case someone um, or you is going there and you're not sure how to get out of the airport. Now, how do you choose where you should live in Sydney? I think the best thing is to figure out what you're really looking for when you go to Sydney. Like, you know, why are you moving to Sydney? What are your uh, financial limitations? Where are you going to be working and things like that? If you already have a job or you're going to school, uh, most likely you're going to want to be located close to that, so make sure you become familiar with the suburb. And the cool thing is the postal code sort of work, uh, like 2000 is the city, and then it just kind of works its way up and down based on where you go. So it's like 2006, 2007, 2010, 2060, whatever. Um, now, Sydney and its suburbs are sort of divided into north, south, east, and west. The eastern suburbs uh, include, you know, Bondi, Paddington, uh, Coogee, Tamarama, and these are sort of the more touristy, um, some people call them posh, but I don't think they are, um, a lot more happening, um, a lot of young people, you get a lot of backpackers, a lot of surfers, it's very vibrant, very happening, very alive very hippie I suppose um, but it's really really great it's a great place to meet a lot of people and uh, it is a little bit more expensive to live there but there are you know you can get rooms for rent you can even share a room or whatever and um, it's it's really it's really great if you're younger or even if you're looking to meet a lot of people and you're actually just choosing to go to Australia for experience and or you like to surf. Now when it comes to surfing though, a lot of my surfing friends tell me they prefer Manly, which is a northern beach. It's a lot bigger and um, it's a lot less touristy, even though tourists do go there. The only thing or the drawback with it is that the only way to get there that is convenient is the ferry. You can take the bus or drive or whatever, but it actually takes a really long time. So if you're working in the city and uh, you want to be close, you probably don't want to go out that far. If you are looking to be close to the city, there are suburbs like Piermont, which is actually just close to the city. Like you can walk there and it's um, by Darling Harbour. And then you have a lot of suburbs in, on the northern side, which are extremely close. The thing is with the northern suburbs is that they're very, very expensive, much more so than the eastern suburbs. They're a lot more quiet, so it's a lot harder to meet people there. And um, the commute is not as, you know, friendly, like you just sort of have to walk over the bridge, which is fine. But when you're living sort of in Piermont or you're in Glebe, which is another suburb right sort of in downtown or in the CBD, um, it's a lot easier and then on the eastern side you have Paddington which is also pretty much attached as well as Darlinghurst. The thing with Darlinghurst that I will mention is that it is very very gay friendly. So if you have a problem with um, that sort of culture or lifestyle or 
people, which you shouldn't, um, you know, it would be really unfortunate if you do, but if you do have sort of some sort of issue with anything like that, um, you probably don't want to stay there and, you know, create discomfort for yourself and a lot of the people who live around that area. Not to say everyone who lives there is gay, but most people who live there are fairly gay friendly. Um, and it's sort of marked by a giant fluorescent pink building. So I love that suburb. suburb. I hang out there all the time, but each to their own. Um, if you go sort of west, um, you have Inner West, which one of the great suburbs in Inner West is Newtown. And Newtown is, again, very gay friendly, um, but it's extremely happening, very artistic. There's always something going on. Um, they have a couple of festivals there throughout the year, um, a lot of cool joints for eating and drinking and things like that, a lot of really nice bars. Um, if you go further, you know, you get to places like Ashfield, which is where a lot of students actually live. It's a lot more affordable, but it doesn't have the city vibe, it doesn't have the, you know, young culture. It's just a place where a lot of young people live because it's affordable. Um, I personally didn't find it very comforting when I was there, but I have clients and friends who live there who have never had a problem and they've lived there for years and years, primarily because it's affordable. If you go further west, you hit um, Parramatta, which is the downtown of the west, and uh, they have a giant mall, so a giant west field, they have a lot of restaurants, and a lot of the people who live west sort of tend to party only in Parramatta. Um, and then further down you have Blacktown and Penrith. The thing with um, the western suburbs is that it's a lot more locals um, who sort of come from that sort of western side of Sydney and um, you'll meet a lot of um, immigrants from South Asian backgrounds there as well. In the eastern end you'll meet a lot of uh, people from you know, Europe, England, Canada, uh, the, the United States who come there and a lot of them come there in the summer to surf and then they go back home to ski wherever they are. Um, so hopefully I've sort of given you some idea. Now when you're looking at south, there are a few suburbs down south and the thing is that the further you go from downtown Sydney or CBD, um, the more sort of residential it becomes, the more homely, family oriented it is. For oriented it is. Um, so make sure you sort of sit down and have a look at the map of Sydney. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I will try and answer them to the best of my abilities. But this is really something I wanted you to think about. Um, <clears throat> I will provide some links to hostels. Uh, the Sydney Transit and also websites if you're looking to find permanent or temporary accommodation. Again, I would recommend if you're going there on your own, maybe go somewhere temporary for a while, especially if you can afford it, um, unless you are absolutely sure of where you want to go. Hopefully this little tidbit of chit chat helped you guys out and uh, I look forward to talking to you again and thank you so much for your love. Please don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and uh, please let me know what else you'd like to see so I can keep these sort of videos coming. Take care. Bye.